Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. For this round of readings, I've been pulling a card from my goddess knowledge deck. And you got Epona. She was originally a goddess of Celtic Gaul, modern day France. And then she got adopted by the Romans as well. She is uh, kind of a fertility goddess. She's a, a protector of horses. She also was, you know, prayed to for the fertility of horses. And she is a psychopomp. All right, ferrying souls or, or helping them as they cross over after death. So she is, right, she's a very scorpionic uh, goddess, or you can write a goddess on that Scorpio Taurus axis. Comfortable, all right, in both life, all right, and birth, as well as with death. And I think she's showing up here, Scorpio, to give you sort of a boost of confidence, some encouragement, right? Isn't she, right? She's sort of, right? She has this very free aspect here in this painting. Right, very confident. And I believe she wants that for you. We were talking in your last reading about you, you know, kind of being on your way to your kind of the, the next adventure for you. Um, but some of you may be feeling perhaps you know, maybe a little, I don't know, anxious about it, or just perhaps even having trouble knowing your own mind. Right? Now these, as I, as I always say, these readings are meant to be timeless. Whenever you get here, you get here. And it's for you then. But at the time that I'm doing this reading, Uranus has just stationed direct and Taurus, right across the way from you, Scorpio. And the moments when planets do that stationing, both right in each direction, is often the most intense period of the retrograde cycle. And he, right, he is, he's also not, right, he's barely moving at all. I mean, he will take until June to move barely four degrees and get out of his shadow zone. But he is now facing forward. And in fact, everybody's facing forward. All planets in the sky, all the major planets are direct. So, Whatever, right, whenever you are, whatever the influence is, I think that you are, right, you're wanting to move forward, you're wanting to go on your way to get in your boat and go. But you may be feeling some, you know, emotional confusion or worry, perhaps, or, right, a sense that you don't know exactly what to do, right? There's this sense in this five of wands that you don't know which wand to choose. Right? You're totally ready for this new cycle to begin, for this new adventure. I mean, we have, right, and then we have the judgment card. Gabriel blowing his trumpet. Time to begin something new and to really face forward, right? To, to really come to terms with everything that has come before and to be able to let it go.
But again, right, there's this two of pentacles, right, kind of same every which way, really. Um, right, and actually sideways, there's this infinity kind of thing. So it may, you may still be feeling a sense of not quite knowing what the next step is. I mean, it may be right that you're on that boat, right? That we're still not, right? We haven't quite made it to the opposite shore. And the kind of initial advice coming out here is just to do the work, the daily stuff. Don't get like all up in your head trying to figure it out. Because that will, right, that'll just be frustrating and annoying. Right, do the, do the daily things. And it may also be a, right, a little bit about mental discipline and not letting your mind wander off into strange corners. Right? Redirect yourself when that happens. Redirect your thoughts if they start, you know, swirling around or, uh, you know, going into unproductive places. Self-criticism. I'm never going to figure it out. Right? Six of Cups. Care for yourself and for the process. Care for these seeds that you've planted gently. Now we do have Gemini coming up and right underneath him, there you are. So I do think, right, that you may be having a lot of conflicting thoughts. Right, because underneath you is Sagittarius and his single arrow. So I think this, right, this really is a lot about what's happening in your head, Scorpio. And how you can kind of care for yourself through this process. I'm getting the Solar Flares card, which I think is actually quite literal. I know that, uh, and it may be happening when you're reading this, even if it's, you know, a year or two from when I record it. But there has been solar flare and coronal mass ejection activity in the sun, right? We've, we are actually in a very active solar cycle and have been for a little while. And, you know, we don't see these things, right? They're invisible. But we are, we do feel them, right? We are electrical beings. So just as a really strong solar flare can affect electronics, it can also affect beings, right? It, it can affect, um, right, the navigation skills of birds and other animals. So there is, right, there is stuff happening. So you don't have to, you know, blame yourself or think you're not doing things right. There are actual, you know, physical reasons why your human body may need some extra care. So I think you're being asked to really, right, really take care of yourself. How, how can you make things feel really abundant for yourself? Right? How do you water yourself and your seeds? Right, so that you feel more expansive. 
rather than feeling like you have to curl up in a ball. Right, really sort of, right? Because you have more resources perhaps than you think you do. Right, it isn't all necessarily about money. There may be other ways that are available to you or through other people. If you ask for help or just ask for companionship. Right, what are all the different resources that you have that you can use to really beautify this time for yourself? Um, you know, Scorpio can have right in our in our kind of distorted landscape um, can have a mistrust of physical resources. Right, can have this idea that you know these things are material, or that it makes you selfish, or that they're unnecessary. Right, to the spiritual existence. Right, that one could be. You know, like an anchorite living on a platform somewhere in the middle of the desert, and that would be it. But we are, you know, we're humans. Our bodies and our emotions and even our right, our minds have physical needs. And it's not just about, you know, food and water. Right, we need companionship. We need beauty in our lives, right? Some, some comfort for the body, you know, a feeling of expansiveness, a feeling that, you know, that, right, that the universe is filled with beauty and that it can flow right through your life. So here we have disruption, which to me, you know, feels largely about um, kind of outside influences that uh, things that we read, certainly on social media, the news, all of these things, this has been coming up kind of in many readings, the backing away from all of that because it clouds and um, disrupt the signal coming from your wider self and from source and from your non-physical fellowship. Right. right, that it's about trust Trusting yourself, trusting your guides, trusting your own intuition. Trusting the fire. I actually find this kind of a strange image in this card. Because I think of the of a fire fairy as being very powerful and expansive. And she has, right, her body language is the opposite. Right, and she's kind of self-protective and a little right there's some anxiety happening and this is perfectly natural right to feel to feel a little anxious about any new undertaking any new adventure new section of our lives And you don't have to feel bad about that. It's okay. Allow yourself to feel what you feel. And then find a way to remind yourself that this is not the reality. Right? This is the reality. You are the Merlin. You are the wizard, the sorcerer. You have a pet dragon, or dragon familiar. Right, 
right? Your wider self, your, your fellowship source are all available to you. You just need to take care of yourself. To take care of both sides of the axis. You know, to go perhaps on, you know, spiritual journeys, shamanic journeys, to do, you know, a deep spiritual practice, um, to engage in mediumship, to talk to your ancestors, to do all of these amazing things, right? The Scorpio end of the axis. And then also the Taurus end of the axis, to take care of your physical self and your space. To remember to keep right one foot in each place. So here you are, the Six of Swords coming out on your boat, right? It's not, it's kind of a, a fantastical boat, a sort of peacock woman boat. And you are, right, you're, you're a little asleep here. You're having a little bit of a nap as you fly through the sky, and that's okay. All right, you are flying into this everlasting light, into deeper alignment and connection with all that is both spiritual and physical. So the Five of Wands repeats, and this time it's a little bit more, um, right, it's a little bit more aggressive, right? Your, your face has fallen off and there's flames shooting out of your neck. Um, And that's okay too, right? This is part of the process. Right, we kind of have to come through this um, unschooled phase, right? This novice phase, right? We encounter these fiery energies, both within ourselves and, and in the world. And we have to learn how to channel them. Right, without them kind of blowing our head off. But that's right, that's where you're going. We're all right, we're all novices, we're all new babies, toddlers in these new timelines that we're all entering here on this journey together. Um, I've been thinking, you know, I, I really, right, I don't know where the channel is going, I don't know how long. I will do these readings. I sort of vacillate between thinking that, that, you know, maybe it'll be a long thing and also thinking that it has a very specific and finite purpose. That those of us who are here are in this shifting space. That we're all moving into these new timelines into these new spaces. And that I'm here as a messenger, right, of help and advice and um, messages for all of us to help us through this. Because we are all new, right? This is new that we're stepping into, right? We want to really step into wholly new spaces and ideas. Forgetting what came before, right? It doesn't matter, you know, what happened the last time you had some transit. Forget it. New spaces, something not seen before by us. And, right, so we are, right, you're on your way. 
right? You kind of have to pass through that five of wands learning space, disruption space, before you end up as the king of wands. I mean, really, right, there's a whole, you know, line, right? Page, knight, queen, before we get to the king. Right, but he is someone who stands confidently in his passion. He knows when to move and when not. He knows when to ask for help and when to go it alone. He knows how to regulate his own nervous system. And what he needs to do for himself, right? If he's having maybe a bad time. Right, because things are gonna happen even in this new timeline, right? You might come down with the flu or, you know, have an argument with someone or something will go pear-shaped. Maybe because it needed to. But he always comes back to center. Right, his internal compass, his internal gyroscope brings him back to center. Right, and that's through the heart, through choices made with love rather than fear. Through trusting others, right, learning, learning how to trust and who we can trust. Right, trust doesn't mean you just trust everybody out of the geek. It means learning to read your own internal signals. And to pay attention, right? When were you right? How did your body feel when you're in, you know, how do you feel when you're in the presence of somebody who you know you can trust, right? Who has always come through, has been, you know, there for you, has never betrayed your trust. How do you feel in their presence? And then how do you feel when you think about somebody who didn't do that, who betrayed your trust in the past? Right, learn, and then we right, then you can choose wisely and well. Right, when you let your heart do the choosing, and that's really your heart, right? Not the sort of ego heart, if we want to call it that. Right, the the perhaps unhealed aspect, a, a wounded aspect. that pretends to be, right, your heart. All right, because it's filled with emotion. But if you're with somebody who doesn't make you feel good, right, who makes you mistrust yourself, who makes you feel, you know, badly about yourself, if you don't like who you are when you're with them, your heart would never tell you to stay in such a situation. Right, that's something else. I mean, it's certainly worth right finding out what that is. Why, why, what is that about? You know, what are you trying to perhaps fix? Sometimes we do that, right? We get involved with someone in an attempt to fix a past relationship. Right, particularly, I think, often with our parents. You know, if I can make this person love me, it'll make up for the fact that I didn't feel loved by this parent. And of course, it doesn't work that way. So learning to really choose with your heart. To really choose with your feelings. And have confidence in that. You don't have to keep questioning yourself. You don't have to necessarily right, go to outside sources to validate what you feel, what you want, 
what you think is right for you, who you think you are. You don't need to go to anybody else to find out your purpose. Because we are, right? We are great just by being here. Right? Just by living this life, right? We are living life. We don't have to wait for anything. It all matters, all of it. Right? That day that you spent on the couch watching Netflix, that matters. It's all part of life, part of the experience. Your soul would never shame you. The source of all things would never shame you for anything. You are wholly loved. You are wholly great. You have greatness just in and of yourself. Right? Feel this feeling. Right? Opponent's openness of spirit that allows her, right, to cross between here and there. She wants you to know that about yourself, right? That you are the Merlin. Even on days, maybe when you don't quite feel like it, right? You will come to feel this confidence and solidity. It may not happen instantly, but it is coming. And you can take this time, right, while you're on the boat to really cultivate that confidence in yourself. So in the advice section, uh, the underside, right, is the devil, right? We have the devil, we have the three of swords and the nine of swords, right? All the, all the monsters under the bed, right? The persistent thoughts, and behaviors that kind of maybe plague us. And actually underneath the devil is this seven of wands, right? A self-defensiveness that we might feel. Um, right, the ways that our own thoughts may stab us in the heart. And also, actually, I was watching um, a tarot reading by Scorched Earth Tarot, and she was saying how she she came to understand this card as right truth sometimes being painful right that the swords were sometimes truths that we'd had to come to accept and there may be some of that too but that it's okay we can heal in this process Right, and then of course the anxious overthinking up in the middle of the night, having nightmares, mental state, perhaps depression as well. And so the answer to that is the King of, or the uh, Knight of Cups and the Hierophant. So once more, Scorpio, Taurus, Axis. Now, technically, in the Hermetic tradition, it's the King of Cups who is Scorpio. But I think we're getting the Knight because of the Knight's youthfulness and romance. Right? The Knight is bringing the cup. Right? He carries his cup out into the world. Right? It's a kind of trusting thing, right? To get on your horse and bring your cup to people. And then, of course, the Hierophant is Taurus. Reminding us always, 
right, of this spirit body connection. As above, so below. As within, so without. Uh, when I'm recording this, the nodes are still in Taurus, Scorpio, North Node Taurus. In July of 2023, they will move, shift into Aries Libra. And kind of a new story will begin. So there is in right in the moment, if you're watching this when I record it, a, a still a period of time, right, to really explore. that Taurus Scorpio axis of spirit and matter and how we think about both of those. All right, that your strength lies in this axis. So Scorpio, you, you totally have this. You may be feeling a little uneasy. You're kind of still, right, if you're still in the boat, right, it's not solid footing under your feet net yet. But it's coming. You're gonna land on that other shore and the new adventure will begin. And in the meantime, right, really do all of the things to strengthen yourself, to give yourself everything that you need, right? Water your seeds, work on mental discipline so that your mind doesn't run away with you and do that gently, yes, not as a taskmaster, but as a guide to yourself. Remember that you are the Merlin. And that Epona is reading, rooting for you. I wish you all the very best, Scorpio. And I'm interested to see, right, what the next reading brings up as we go on this road. I'll see you next time. So long, Scorpio.